everybody. All right. Thanks so much for joining the second orchestration monthly call. <laughs> we have uh, Dean Tribble. Hello, Dean. Hello, hello, hello. We've got Roland on the call. How's it going, Roland? Hey, Santi. And uh, I see we have JD. How's it going, JD? Uh, good, good. Thanks. Good to be here. Awesome, awesome. Thanks everyone, all, all the guests joined. So yeah, let's kick this off. It's been a it's been a busy month for for Gork and orchestration. Um, so Dean, I'd love to. You know, we've been doing a lot this past month. East Denver was a big week. A lot of events. A lot of discussions. Should we kick off? Uh, kind of. You know, what what did we learn about? You know, the state of 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 the industry and its relationship to orchestration, and then, you know, what was uh what was your big takeaway from? Or takeaways, maybe. So, yes, I talked about orchestration a lot last week, or uh, last time we were here. Um, I'm, I'm still in many ways coming down from East Denver. Um, it was awesome. Uh, so, you know, key thing that, that you know, we, 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 we got to explain orchestration to people and explain chain abstraction to people and explain these things. And I'll, and I'll hit on that. But it tuned up some of the key realizations as people really strongly responded to what we were talking about. So we co-sponsored Chain Abstraction Day with Near and Frontier. And Chain Abstraction is really this, you know, vision that users want to seamlessly access, you know, digital assets and services independent of their chain. And you explain that to people just like, you know, just like a user who wants to order a hamburger in Web2, they don't care what what uh, what you know whether the DoorDash is running on Amazon or Google Cloud or what have you, they want to push button have have the hamburger appear. People got it. People understood it. Yes, of course we want that kind of thing. Yes, of course um, we will not succeed at Web three. We will not succeed at all this new stuff until we can deliver that to users because you know the mainstream users out there they want solutions to their problems and they don't they, and and you know that that involves multiple assets. What really got people was understanding simple examples of that. And these are quite simple. The, 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 the scenario of I've got USDC burning a hole in my Ethereum pocket, and I, want, and I want steak tea at the end of the day. And we took that simple example, and it requires three signatures and four blockchains. And hand carrying these tokens from, from one place to another to, you know, across Noble and over to Osmosis and traded on Osmosis and back to Celestia and, you know, all, all these things. And so multiple people could react with the, gee, this took, you know, three hours for me to do. Yeah, man, that's hard. It ought to be easy. This seems like a trivial thing. And yet every time I do it, it's harder than I expect. And that's such a simple example of seamlessly using multiple assets across multiple chains, where implementing, the, implementing that is hard, not just using it right now, but implementing that in smart contracts is hard. And that's what orchestration makes easy, right? Orchestration is the... the um, tooling and ability to simply coordinate and manage digital assets and services across multiple chains and build the use cases that users now demand. And it was getting people to, you know, getting people's reaction to that where they would tell their own stories was one of the, one of the things that we got out of East Denver. And we saw, you know, like it, or the whole, this whole sequence of events at East Denver. And we saw at all these different conferences where last year it might've been about, you know, here's what my tribe is doing. Here's what's happening on here. Here's what's happening on, on, on Solana. Here's what we're doing in, in, in Polygon. Everything was multi-chain. Everything was cross-chain. Everything was about um, how can I actually solve a web three problem for users, not a, not a, you know, my favorite chain problem for users. Cause they just don't have that. They just have, you know, I, I want to do my, I want to do my thing and I don't care about your infra. And so, so the power of orchestration people got, right. You know, they understand, okay, it's hard. We had multiple people come up and go that example that you showed in your talk that was easy. I've been working on that for months and it's really hard. And I really want to build with this stuff because, because that seems like it ought to be easy and hasn't been. Um, and, and so the orchestration, that power to make these solutions was very exciting. The other thing that was exciting, and then I'll, I'll wrap this up, is a lot of, you know, was, was the realization of how important our successes in, Cos in Cosmos and in Interop generally across the crypto ecosystem was to creating the environment in which people realize they need these user solutions and realize that they need orchestration, right? Because of modular because of interop we have hundreds if not thousands of chains and projects all coming up and all connected 
and all creating this new problem of I've got an asset that's really cool that just came up on that other chain and I want to be able to use it over here on this swap or on this DEX or on this perp or on this, you know, this, this wallet platform that has nicer interaction or whatever it is. And so modular creates the scenario where we need orchestration. So, you know, hence really the next step in the evolution of Web3 from that perspective from modular is uh, the world of orchestration. So that was, it was just great to see that. It was great to see that uptake. And, you know, and I'm, you know, as I said, still coming down from that, um, you know, working on the orchestration API that Roland will talk about later and very excited about what we've got, uh, what we've got um, uh, coming out uh, soon. So. That was my that was my take on East Denver. And oh, by the way, the aquarium and all the parties and seeing everyone was just awesome. <laughs> Great, yeah. I, I I wanted to bring one thing up too that I that I had you know noticed through going to a lot of the talks at East Denver and and you know one of the big takeaways was that you know fifty percent plus of the talks that I went to were pretty you know heavily using the term and the word multi chain right this kind of interoperability and and, and the ability to actually do things across different chains. Uh, and that was everywhere, right? And that was from projects I was actually surprised we're talking about that to projects I'd never learned or heard about. So, you know, is it, you know, how how do we see people thinking about this space now from from like the multi-chain perspective? Is it is it, are we ready to do this kind of deep interconnection now that interoperability has been established so deeply, you know, and, and what's the kind of, you know, the other big, side of this is UX, right? Through chain abstractions we've talked about. And like, I think that's, you know, what is, you know, maybe it's a question for, for Roland or Dean. It's like, where, you know, where can orchestration kind of make, make that possible, right? And make that multi-chain reality possible. Uh, and I, I think you've touched a bit on this, Dean, but maybe, maybe Roland, we can also talk about the, you know, the APIs and, and the technology we're actually releasing to enable that. Yeah. Yeah, happy to, Santi. Um, so, as as Dean mentioned, we we've had a lot of conversations about orchestration. Um, you, you know, you've seen content come out. You you've seen Dean going and, and speaking at conferences. You know, on my side, I've been really focused on what are we shipping and when to 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 really drive the orchestration reality. And where we've been focused on is on a set of APIs that just makes dealing with these multi-chain concepts very straightforward for developers you know again as we think about chain abstraction largely from the user standpoint improving user experience but really what's what's true in this space is the the reason multi-chain applications are, are hard to build is just they're hard to build the the experience for developers is bad and in many cases they don't even have the tools they need and so uh the orchestration apis that agoric is working on is really you know you can think of them as very straightforward ways to create interchain accounts to send messages cross chain to react to notifications coming back to query the status of balances all the things that developers need to build and make orchestration uh, a reality for their application and there's a lot that's going into that on our side, um, which probably doesn't matter to most of you, but it, it's sort of a, a set of not just the APIs coming together, but platform features being released, upgrades to uh, Agoric's IBC stack and, and just general interchain stack. Um, and then also working with our first reference builder, uh, which is Calypso on their specific use case. So uh, a big highlight from, from our end was seeing the Calypso demo come together ahead of, ahead of ETH Denver they will be moving to build on top of the orchestration APIs, um, which will sort of allow them to move off of some of the really detailed low level work they, they've had to do to, to build the demo so far. Um, we, we hope to give them much more straightforward and simple and understandable way to, to do what they're doing. So they will be deploying on top as well. And so the team is, is focused not just on platform upgrades, the APIs themselves, uh, but also on support for Calypso. That's all coming together sort of simultaneously. Um, and I think we're, we're looking forward to that um, all effectively shipping in sequence soon. Um, and so if you are a validator on, on the platform, I think you're probably already aware that upgrade 14 is, is going out and is in testing in, um, in our Emory net, our, our production like test net. That is the first step towards shipping a bunch of these orchestration features. Upgrade 15 will be coming in um, as soon as possible after that, which will contain additional upgrades to get us to where we need to be. Um, so that really is the big focus for effectively all of the engineering team here and, and the product team as well. Um, and then alongside that, 
we're doing a big effort to update doc, update documentation. So as these APIs are coming together, we want to make sure that developers can come to the Agoric docs, quickly understand how to build um, and turn around an orchestration contract quickly. So that will be coming together alongside the virtual hackathon that we've been talking about um, in, in sort of the Q2 timeframe. So um, that's, that's it from my side. Happy to give it back to you, Santi, or answer any questions. Cool. Thanks, Roland. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, I'd love to bring up uh, JD from our team to kind of talk about how we, how we transition a lot of this into, into some of our community initiatives. We have you there, JD. <clears throat> yeah, just had to click on the unmute. How's it going? Good, good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, th there's definitely been a lot going on following the events and there's, uh, you, you know, there's been a lot of activity in our community from the East Denver and all of its side events. Uh, it was great work from Ant-Man who was uh, live, uh, providing a live feed of all of the activities and events going on. And so we were able to get those shared into our community, uh, into Discord, into Telegram, uh, as well as a post in the forum that kind of captures, you know, all of Dean's talks and, uh, a bunch of the other activities and events going on. And then uh, another another big thing that happened during this period uh, in the inter uh, in the Agoric Discord is we merged the inter-protocol community into the Agoric community. Uh, the idea behind this being uh, to have a more unified community. Um, so uh, what does that mean? It's uh, uh, previously the inter-protocol community was in its own server. And so there would be cases where, you know, somebody would come in having an issue uh, uh, when they encounter some error on inter-protocol and then they come into the Agoric server and, you know, they're, they, they, uh, I would obviously help them out with what, what they can, but they're not getting the uh, inter-protocol team supporting them. And so uh, we've brought them into our, in, into our community and uh, the, uh, you know, by bringing both communities under under one roof, we're able to just have uh, a more cohesive environment. And so you can join the inter-protocol channels by coming in. There is a new inter-protocol category with a start here. And all you've got to do is click the inter-protocol emoji and you'll unlock all of the channels and be able to communicate with the inter-protocol team. They're all present in there. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and to that, we're going to be having at the end of, uh, at the end of this month, uh, let me just make sure I've got my date correct on March 28th, we will be having our next community office hours, which we're treating as a discord mixer. Uh, so we'll have the inter protocol team coming in. Uh, as well as, you know, the Agoric, we'll have Agoric team, uh, including the moderators and advocates from both sides uh, coming in just to chat and, you know, get everybody familiar with each other. So please come join us for that. Uh, again, that's March 28th and that happens in Discord. You can join the server uh, by going to agoric.com slash Discord and come, uh, come, on, come on in, hang out with us, chat with us. And yeah. Uh, th that's it for me. I'll pass it back to you, Santi. Cool. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. So it sounds like we're we're becoming a big family <laughs> on that Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Slowly but surely, we're expanding and growing. Great. Great. Awesome. Yeah. So um, thank you, JD. Uh, so quick note: if anybody is going to be in Seoul, uh, we will be in Seoul end of March for Eat Seoul, Little Asia, and the next Chain of Traction Day Summit. Uh, which we are um, co-sponsoring and joining with Near Frontier Research and a handful of other companies that uh, spend quite a handful of ecosystems. So that's you know, very excited for that, continuing that. Um, I'll jump in there. You know, the, the chain abstraction is, you know, not just an agoric thing, right? That is a cross-chain, cross 
you know, ecosystem problem of users want this seamless access. And that doesn't just mean they want to take advantage of how awesome IBC is and seamlessly go from Agoric to Osmosis to Neutron or whatever. It's that they want to go from ETH to, to, to Agoric or other Cosmos chains to Solana to Aave. And so this chain abstraction day is a summit that crosses all ecosystems and all chains. It is a, you know, it, it is a big part of the next narrative. Like I said, the you know orchestration is the next modular, right? It, it, you know the scenario is created, or the the need for chain abstraction, the need for these kinds of you know orchestration in an operation is created by our success of interop and 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 modular and layer twos and all that. And so you know that need is broadly being recognized. It's a thing that investors are starting to pay attention to a lot. And um, and and so, you know, it's exciting to be a key part of that going forward as this cross this cross chain cross ecosystem activity. So if you are going to Crypto Soul or if you are going to any of a few other events throughout the year, there will be chain abstraction days that include not just Cosmos, but 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 other chains where we're talking about how people are tackling it differently or how we're enabling orchestration, um, you know, programming from Agoric's point of view across all these different ecosystems. So so if you're in if you're in in Korea at the end of the month, by all means, come join us and and, and look for other events. They'll be on our roadmap and event calendar. Yeah, and actually, it's a good transition because you can actually come and learn how to build towards chain abstraction with orchestration at the hackathon we were preparing for Q2. Um, we're also planning to do a lot of workshops uh, in India for that. So if you're based out of India, um, definitely let us know. We'll have, we'll have more news about that soon, um, but that will be an amazing opportunity for any devs who wanna get their hands on orchestration and see what it's like to actually build you know, chain abstraction. Uh, so the other last piece here is is we do have, um, you know, we will be attending Brussels as well. For those who, who don't know, ETCC this year is not in Paris, but it is in Brussels. Um, and there will also be plans for a chain of traction summit, just like Dean was talking about in Seoul out there. And a great opportunity for devs to get their hands on this tech. Um, obviously, Nebula is happening out there, and we're excited for that. That organization's done some amazing event work for the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, and we actually have an article coming up uh, Hopefully today, maybe tomorrow, um, diving into the uh, use cases for um, you know, some example application design use cases for orchestration that we think uh, people will want to read about and learn more about since it's, it's really putting things things on paper uh, in regards to orchestration to see how you can actually build with it. And, and uh, yeah, we'd love to get those discussions going if, you, if you're a builder out there. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what I had to say if anyone else wants to you know, jump in, add anything here. All good from my side. I'll leave uh, with module leads to orchestration and orchestration leads to users. <laughs> That's what orchestration is for. <laughs> Thank you all. Yeah. I just Thank want you, to go with one more shout out to uh, Ant-Man for the great coverage of East Denver for our community. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ant. <laughs> Where, where was Ant, where, where was not Ant-Man? Yeah, he was, he was all over the place, impressive. Thank you, everybody. Take care.